Unbook him. Where is he? He's with his brain trust running one of his pictures. A big deal. You said you were going to introduce me. I will, baby. I will. When the time is right, you know. The clock just struck, Clyde. Come on, like intro time. Wait. Wait. Well, Billy Baby, hey, that's a great record, buddy. It's the best one yet, you know. Oh, thank you, Clyde. Yeah. Hey, uh, Billy Joe, this is Julie. You remember I told you about her. Huh? Yeah, I do. Hi. Would you like to autograph an arm? Uh, maybe bite an ear or two? <laughs> Julie, Clyde. Well, strike three and you're out. Baby, I didn't even get to bat. <laughs> All right, let's get to it. Opera ball. You and opera. I figured if a Gershwin called Porter, but opera. Well, how else was I going to see you in Tales? Well, why didn't I think of that? Mm-mm. Wrong number. Suggy. No, cost. Remember, it was your idea. Mr. Burke's residence. Captain Burke. When? All right, I'm leaving now. Well, I don't think it hasn't been fun and all that. Honey, it's important. Oh, sure, sure. Honey, it's murder. Hey, it's not the truth. Rain check. Well, now where does a girl go to hire a rainmaker?
sorry to break up the evening, Captain. Yeah, I'm sure. What's the matter? Haven't you ever seen a head waiter before? Is a plain clothesman? Amos. Hi, Les. Billy Joe Tate. Sing a song of corn pone, end up eating pie. Accent on end. This your day for philosophy, Les? What have you got? They're showing a movie in there. The others were dancing out in the patio. The pool house is where Tate got it. A single shot killed him. Movie there. Party out in the patio. Tate out at the pool house. Why? It's a good question. Maybe someone invited him out there. Set him up. Have the lab check the footprints. I've already done that. The lab's dusted in here, too. No prints. There's a goodie here, though. Fresh powder burns. Yeah, the shot had to come from here. The doc says that the angle of fire checks. Yeah, with that light, it would have been an easy shot. Pool house was dark, Amos. The lab boys had to lit up so they could work. He didn't happen to come up with anything as handy as a murder weapon. It didn't take much looking. It's been dusted, but no prints. Fired once. I found it lying right here. Considerate killer. It's a thing of beauty. Did you phone in the serial number? They're checking. As soon as you release it, I can get it to dark and see if it matches up with the bullet and Tate. It's released. What about the people? The guests? Now, there's the rub. Well, rub me a little. Well, I got all the names and addresses, about 43 people, but only about eight will interest you. Interest me. Well, these are Tate's business associates, his uh, close friends, the, the in-group. The rest were casuals. One time is the outer fringe. Looks like we've got a hard day in front of us. I'm not dressed for it. You care for company, Captain? No, just fast answers from the lab. Stay with them. Kim. Mm hmm? Good job. When promotion comes, I'll remind you. Be a moment, Captain. Just saying goodbye. Bye, Billy Joe. Drink, Captain? No, thank you. How about coffee? No, thanks. Just questions. Just questions. Well? You were Billy Joe's personal manager and president of the Billy Joe Tate Enterprises. I was a great deal more than that. A wrong track, Captain. So wrong. Put me on the right one. Billy Joe Tate. Beautiful boy in a dirty grabbing world. Country boy in a catch as catch can. He was picking cotton when I first found him. Did you know that? In a little over 18 months, I'd run him into a million dollar a year industry. I did that, all of it. Very impressive. More than you can possibly imagine. Yes, he was a hand tailored, painfully crafted piece of work, Captain. My work. I picked his clothes. Told him what to sing, how to move. That violent style of his, the sex that roared out of him. Everything that made them line up for blocks. My ideas, all of them. I took a superstitious, frustrated country bumpkin and made him a king. He did do the singing. <laughs> Everybody sings. How many kings are there? Well, go on, ask it, Captain. That indelicate question you've been considering, feel free. All right. You didn't happen to be in love with them. I created the legend. Would have been a little foolish to fall into my own trap, wouldn't it? Just business. 
the big girl's world. Love is for children. Sure. You know, you're a very attractive man, Captain. When the hunter isn't showing through. Sorry. Occupational hazard. Understandable. Why not point it where it'll do the most good? Why don't you point it for me? Well, I'm not making any accusations. But sooner or later, somebody would mention it. Lou Cole was his agent. They weren't quite seeing eye to eye these days. The reason? Why not ask Mr. Cole? Thank you. Problems? I was just wondering, what about you now, Miss Dexter? Well, the cotton fields are still there. There'll always be another beautiful, hungry kid with Billy Joe's shoulders. Or yours. You don't happen to play the guitar, Captain. No, I don't. Too many strings. All right, ladies. Pleased to begin. Hey, Danny. See you tomorrow, fellas. In this day and age, it's like trying to sell buggy whips. But what does a man do when his dollar walks away from him? What does a man do, Mr. Cole? Now we get to it, huh? Captain, uh, how many people in this country? All right. 180 million, give or take a few. Line them all up. And I'm the last one to kill Billy Joe. Agents. They always cry about how they sweat, how they run. Not me. There was none of that handling Billy Joe. It was banker's hours, a piece of cake. Don't you see? What pushing did I have to do? The kid was the biggest property in the world. He picked his jobs. I beat away the rest with a stick. That was the job, an agent's dream. So, somebody shoots a bullet and 12 hours later, look at me. Back down out of the clouds again. Now you tell me. What man in his right mind would do that to himself, huh? Pretty good argument. Which brings us to another argument. Like? The word is it. You and Billy Joe weren't getting along. Whose word? Who'd say a thing like... Oh, yeah, sure. The Velvet Whip. Miss Lynn Dexter, creator, star maker. Miss I did it all, yeah. Sure, it has her touch. Why would she point to you? Maybe to steer you away from a home plate. You seem to be doing a little steering yourself. What sauce for the goose? I don't think so. It doesn't add up. With Tate dead, she'd be the biggest financial loser of all. You think so, huh? Captain, a little free education. My business, it's like any business. You can always shave a corner here and there, uh, take a little more than you're entitled to, but that's buttons. I need cash. If it's a uh, real hanky-panky you're after, if you, if you want to steal real big, you gotta be in the top spot. You gotta handle the money. The Velvet Whip, she handled the money. Okay, kids, you're hired. Goodbye, Mr. Cole. Okay, uh... Uh, Harvey Cleave, juggler, you're next. Now you don't. Do you want anything? Oh, nothing. We can't wait. Well, look, Les. Subpoena the books of the Billy Joe Tate Enterprises. Pick them up yourself, will you? All of them. Make sure you look under the rug. I want to know just where that money goes. Looking for a little aroma? Well, if there is, you'll smell it. You've got such an adorable nose. Mother always thought so. Well, 
Lab struck out on that pool house. A couple partial footprints, but nothing usable. A man or woman's? Well, one of them's a woman. Win a little, lose a little. Yeah, when do we start winning? Hey, how did you do with that agent, Cole? We went around. That's a sly look. Did he mention his wife? Did you notice that they have two different addresses? It hadn't escaped me. Anything for me? Right. The point? Well, I had a talk with a friend of mine. He does a column on the music business. You mean you pumped him? Now, the calls are separated. And it's a whisper that Billy Joe Tate was the reason. Angry husbands have been known to bite. That's very good, Tim. Well, thank you. I like detectives who quote purple prose. Oh, that was just my friend's line. Do me a favor, will you? What was that, Captain? Give it back to him. Expensive. May I sit down? <laughs> Somehow, I would have expected cowhide. Whatever does turn out as we expect it to. Are you always that devious, Captain Burke? No. I'll be direct. Billy Joe Tate. Fine. I'll drink to that. There's been some talk around town about the two of you. That's insulting. I didn't mean to be. Billy Joe and I were just friends. That's all. My husband was his agent. Now? You're separated? You have no right to come I have in. every right. Because I could ask the same questions downtown. Believe me, Mrs. Cole, it wouldn't be quite as comfortable. The answers would still be the same. No, I don't think so. Because I'd borrow your shoes just long enough to match them up against a very clear set of prints we have from the pool house. A woman was with Tate last night in there. I want to know who she is, why she was with him. Are we going to match up the footprints, Mrs. Cole? Oh. <laughs> I don't judge anybody, Mrs. Cole. All I do is fit the pieces together. A lot of people are going to be hurt. Don't let me hurt the wrong one. Help me. Are you all right? For what I am. Something should be in a test tube or a sideshow. How does it happen to a woman? You go along, you, you're happy. You love your husband. And then suddenly there's a, a... a Billy Joe Tate. A what? A wild, attractive freak. No voice, no talent, just a strange-looking nothing. Until he looked at me. Until he touched me. And then he was everything. And for that, I cut loose heart to pieces. You were in the pool house with him last night. Earlier in the evening. 
later I am. I saw him go out there again. Just before he... Thank you, Mrs. Cole. Can I, uh... Can I drop you someplace? Where? Where is there to go? Problem? I just thought I'd save you some time. I checked out the next name on your list, Rip Farley. Let's go. Could be a long wait, Captain. He's rehearsing. He opens the club tempo in a few hours. Club tempo? Mm -hmm. well, give us time to eat tempo. Here? No. Not here. Packed house tonight, Ripper. We must be deductible. I've heard of slumming, but this cat's ridiculous. That's the fuzz, man. In a chariot like that? That fuzz is loaded. Fuzz is fuzz, man. Like, goodbye. Hey, Dad. Lay one on me. All right, Rip. Long time since you made the scene, man. Yeah, too long. Detective Tilson, Rip Farley. Hi, right, Pop. Hi. All right. How's it going, Rip? Just minding the horn, baking the bread. What brings the fuzz up? Like I wasn't hip. Got you trying to unscramble the arrangement, huh? Like who sent Big Daddy to that great rehearsal in the sky? If you mean Billy Joe Tate, didn't I say that? It's a tough gig, man. You'll be a long time looking for the melody. You were pretty close to him. What, are you trying to put me on? What do you mean? Show me the cat that cooled him and I'll pay his dues. You didn't get along with him? Who did? He was nobody's cut buddy, man. A sour cat right from the top. And I dug him less than anybody. We were charter members in the Mutual Hate Society. Any particular reason? Look, man, let's play it and see. Amos, you looking for a man that had eyes to kill him? Put the irons there. Plainer. I conducted on every wax he ever cut. And it wasn't easy. He had a mean mouth. About three sessions back, he came on too strong. He lipped off at me in front of my side, man, and I don't take that from nobody, man. So I took him out in the alley and made like he was a yo-yo. You mean you worked him over and he still kept hiring you? Yeah, he was a real country boy. A knock on wood, don't walk under the ladder, cat. Superstitious. Yeah. Somehow he got it in his head that I was the luck. Every time I'd start to cut out, he'd up the ante. A lot of good horns walking around with no place to blow, man. You don't walk away from that much bread. Hey, you look tired. Why don't you take five? I'll run a little Gershwin for you. Some other time. Hey, you got the happiest going, young fuzz. Let me in on it. Well, it's you, Mr. Farley. I did some checking. You got a BA, an MA, and a PhD in literature from Harvard, and you got an IQ that's way out of sight. True, Daddy. And yeah, still all this jazz talk. Why? Did you ever catch the grunt and groaners? You mean the uh, restless? Potted wigs, perfume, acrobatics, packed houses. How many citizens do you think they'd draw if they wrestled? Legit. We're hip, Daddy. Cutting out, Faust. Yeah? Amos, this is Les. Mrs. Cole's been trying to get hold of you. Did she say why? No, she's waiting for you at her place. You were about to say yeah, about Farley. There's a lot of hate going on there. Penal Code, Section 31, Paragraph 221A. A rough translation. You can't jug a man for hating. Might be a good thing if you could. It'd save a lot of killing. That's very astute, young fuzz. Let's visit Lisa Cole. Try him there. 
Forget it. Drunk? Dead. Right. Thanks. Good morning. You think so? Lab just found her, Mrs. Cole. Strangulation, period. Partner was gone over, no prints, nothing. Nobody in the building heard anything. Nobody saw the killer come in or go out. Obviously, she was killed by nobody. Now, Henry, I'm sloshing now. Get me something for a headache, will you, please? Yes, boss. Well, Les says that you had the right idea about those books at Tate Enterprises. Yeah? Smoothest juggling act he's ever seen. And check page two. Looks like Lynn Dexter was doing a little stealing. Almost a half a million unaccounted for. Tim, at this level, it's respectfully referred to as embezzlement. <whistles> Billy Joe, the golden goose. What's that for? For the headache. What headache? Tim, I'm going down to the beach, check some figures. Not the kind you're thinking of. Want me to go along? Now you just stay here, have some coffee and something for the headache. Come on, Henry. <laughs> No, dear madam, the mistake was not in the stars. It can never be. It was you who were in error. And so, dear lady, how do we seek our answer? Being born under Aries, we simply count five houses down. Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, and Leo. Making Aries the fifth house to Leo. But, did we consider surrounding influences? Not an auspicious time to offer the heart, dear lady. Small wonder the gentleman failed to cooperate. Uh, that'll be all for today, Mrs. Forsythe. Shall we say next week? Oh, yes, please. Confidence, Mrs. Forsythe. The planets always provide the proper moment for accomplishment. Together with the help of Aries, we shall find that moment. Oh, I hope so. Won't you come in, sir? Mr. DeGroot? Yes. I'm Captain Burke. Homicide. Homicide? Uh, surely uh, not an official visitor reading, perhaps? You're pretty close. Answers will do real fine. To be found there, Captain. Stars hold the key to the future. What do you use for the past? A Ouija board? The sound of the disbeliever. It was ever thus, even in the time of Galileo. Fortunately, all are not so blind. They caught the wisdom of the stars. The Captain? No. It's a little early for me. The heavens point the way. Mortals but obey. Have you any idea how many seek the advice of the group, Captain? 25-year-old Scotch, I'd say quite a lot. From all walks of life they come. Bringing money. Businessmen, artists, merchants. Little rich old ladies from Pasadena. You're impertinent, Captain. You're forgetful. You left out the fattest pigeon of them all, Billy Joe Tate. He was a disciple, yes. Pigeon. You took him for 50,000 in two years. We've got the canceled checks downtown to prove it. The fee was justified. The powers of De Groot are unique. I'll say. Frequent interpretation is needed. The planets are never static. They're in constant motion. So is the interpreter. We've got to make sheet on you downtown to Groot. No, you do move around. Fourteen cities in a year and a half. Every time you get ready to pack up and leave inquiries, they come to you from every walk of life. Shall we try to figure why? I don't appreciate what you're inferring, Captain. This is a legitimate science. The stars... The stars, my Aries. This is the last time around, Groot. What did you have on Billy Joe Tate to make him come up with that kind of money? Nothing. It wasn't like that, Captain. I swear it. He just forced all that money on you. He was dependent on me. He never did anything without consulting me. He was a lonely man. He was frightened. Of what? He never would say. My best Sagittarius. Oh, Captain. Your logic is faulty. Is that a free reading? You're looking for someone who wished Tate dead. You wanted him healthy. Yes, I know. But don't let confidence carry you away. A lot of people are in the same boat. Still one of them pulled the trigger no matter how expensive the bullet was. How was the beach? The drive was nice. No mileage with the Groot? What can you expect? 
Marge was in the fifth house, and Taurus was out to lunch. Amos, you got a minute? Yeah, come in, Les. Fan mail. The sinner has fallen. The prophecy comes true. The word can never be denied. That's all we needed, the crackpot hour. Cheap paper, sold everywhere, mail from Central Station. Waste of time trying to trace. Thanks, Les. Oh, I can't understand it. You can count on it. It never, ever misses. But the kill be sensational enough and these coops will start coming out of the woodwork. How do you figure a thing like that? I said, how do you figure a thing like that? I heard what you said. How do you feel about last respect? I'd rather pay him than get him. Well, go pay them. What was that going to accomplish? Maybe nothing. When the track's muddy and you're trying to get even, never walk away from the long shot. Burke's Law. see soil like that but one place in the world. That's very nice, Mr. Vaughn. Charlie, keep it telling you, just Charlie, just old Charlie. Country saw Mr. Policeman from down home, I had to send up special. We're getting away from the subject, Charlie. Were well, you smart policeman, cousin? You don't know why? Hurts too much. Yeah. Billy Joe gone, the world done went and lost the best man of them all. Won't ever be the same no more, never like it was, uh-uh. Tell me how it was. Like that, cousin. Billy Joe and me way back. All them years of greens and chitlins, when we could get them. And working in the fields side by side. A lot of empty belly days, too. But it got better, didn't it? Sure did, cousin. Uh-huh. Oh, Billy Joe and me, we, we used to sing a little, see, and, and mess around with the guitar. So I wrote this here song, and, and one, one night Billy Joe, he sang it at this here country dance, here, and, and boom, that was it. I started it. Been living top of the hog ever since. You purely sound like kinfolk there, cousin. You want to drink, Charlie, baby? Well, how about it, cousin, huh? No, thanks. Not anything? Uh, later, Vicky, honey. What did you do to earn a thousand dollars a week? Now you sound like a field boss there, cousin. Mm -hmm. Humor me. What did you do? I did everything a man could. Convince me. All right, you know, you know that tune, the tune I wrote, you know? I let, I let him put his name on it. Yeah. I made him do it. Huh. That's it. All, all, for Billy, all for Billy Joe's career, I made him do it. That's the, that's the kind of friend I was. Pretty good investment for yours. You plowing a bad furrow, cousin. I did everything. I earned every penny. I, I, I chauffeured him. I, I babied him. Uh -huh. Yeah, I, 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 I stayed up nights when he's a fretting. I kept people off on his back. I was... A, I wasn't just a fetching carry boy either. Billy Joe put me in charge of a whole record company, a whole record company, that's right, and you ask anyone. I already did. An accountant, a smart one. You know how he looks at it? Nobody in the business so bigger than Billy Joe. Would you know something? The figures didn't quite match. You know what else he thinks, this accountant? 
Somebody's been bootlegging Billy Joe's records. Somebody's been stealing them, selling them, and keeping the money. What's the matter, Charlie? Isn't a thousand dollars a week enough? Figures don't lie, you know. You were the only one who had the opportunity. Charlie. You ever wear hand-me-downs, cousin? Mm -hmm. All my life, hand-me-downs. And then, in luck, finally come. <laughs> but it touched Billy Joe. Not old Charlie. Uh-uh. Why, him? He, he, he didn't have no more talent to me. Uh-uh. Well, I, I can't say he wasn't nice about it or anything. He gave me a big salary and fancy title and all, but... Well, you see, cousin, still hand-me-downs. He get, he get tired of his clothes and his car, and he said, and he said, he said, Charlie boy, you have all these. You take those. Even Vicky out there, yeah, everything. He, you think she look at me if he still wanted her? I, I don't know how to say this, but Billy Joe, he, Billy Joe, he he was a mule. He was a mule to carry everybody. Old Charlie, he was he was a tailor, swishing around, keeping off the flies. Well, he wasn't never gonna catch up with that mule. Pure sick, ain't it, cousin? Love and hate a man at the same time. Hands are dirty, Charlie. I'm here. Oh. You got something? Well, I'm not sure. I guess I just never saw anybody look into a casket and smile before. Yeah. About an hour ago. This guy came in. It was kind of weird looking. He filed by like everybody else, but when he looked down at Billy Joe, he smiled. And? Well, he left and he grabbed a cab. I checked to get an address on him, but the garage says the driver doesn't finish till nine. What happened to the dispatcher call him off the street? Oh, he can't. See, it's just a small outfit over there on 12th and Gurney. Just a couple cabs with no radios in them. Mm, that figures. Be at the garage at nine. Let me know what you find. Oh, uh, Captain. You call. Mm. Yeah, you couldn't possibly do without me tonight, could you, sir? Tell her there'll be other nights. But it's not a girl. That's very interesting. It's a, it's a fish. That's ridiculous. Well, it's a grunion run, Captain. Are you putting me on? Well, you see, what it, actually what it is, it's their little fish, and they wash up on the shore once a year, and tonight's the night. Forget it. Garage, nine o'clock. And bribery will get you no place. As little ammunition on your next stop, a rundown on Billy Joe's sister. Uh, do you want me to go with you? No, uh, you better stay in the foxhole. This one's for your old captain. Grunion. Well, Miss Tate. Mercy, Captain, you couldn't be more wrong. That is the story of my life. Billy Joe and I were close, as brother and sister could be, mercy. But you just said that you didn't see much of your brother. Well, not now, of course. Him being in music and me in the theater. But when we was young and you just couldn't separate us. I do believe the only reason Pa took me along from the home was because Billy Joe wouldn't go without me. Miss Tate, uh, what home? Where? Well, Billy Joe and I, we come from a Fallon home. Didn't you all know that? Pa Tate, took us in when we went by Cotton High. Hmm. Guess it was better than nothing, but I surely don't like remembering. Uh, what don't you like remembering, Miss Tate? Miss Tate? Well, to put it kindly, Paul wasn't exactly the kind to be raising up young'uns. Lord, he was scary, a big tall man with the loudest voice I ever did hear. I never once heard him laugh. I never heard him do anything but yell. Mostly a Billy Joe, poor darling. Let that poor child want to play with him and have a little fun. And he'd shout in that thundering voice, shouting about hellfire and doom and terrible things are coming. 
I swear I don't know why I didn't drive the child right into the asylum. That's what finally made Billy Joe leave home when he was grown enough. I mind the day he left just as plain. Pa was swearing the same old things, even swearing to put a hex on Billy Joe. Billy Joe couldn't get out of there fast enough. Oh, that's my cue, Captain. Well, it certainly has been nice chatting with you. Uh, where's your stepfather now? Down home, last I heard. I left home ten years ago, Captain. We never went back. I love applause, even whistling. But I purely can't stand yelling. You come back and see me, here. Bonnie Bell Tate, sister of Billy Joe, employed as stripper at Club Kazan, revealed today that she and Billy Joe are orphans. Buck? Captain, I'm at the garage. What have you got? The address of my happy mourner. Yep. Submission on Main Street, 324 North. The cabbie said that the man ran it. I'm just around the corner. I'll be right there. Captain? My cabbie is a walking encyclopedia. He even knew the man's name. Are you sitting down? No, I'm riding piggyback. Captain, his name is Jethro Tate. Prophecy, the oldest power in the world, given only to a few, to those who are chosen. That's a whole other discussion. You admit you're Billy Joe's stepfather. To my shame, my eternal shame. You're a long way from home. Why? Man prophesies he has to be there when it happens, has to see it come true, as it did. Been waiting a long time. For the boy to die, because you said so. What kind of man are you? He was warned. The day he left home, I told him how it would be. Doom and blackness, I said. The fire and the sword. You're a little off the mark, Prophet. It was a small, round bullet. No matter. When the word is spoken, the answer comes in many ways. And now the boy is dead and you feel better, huh? No guilt. I was not the instrument, only the voice. Could never be the instrument. Now an accident when I was young. Not enough strength to hold a gun but enough to write a note. So the world would know the strength of the word. Power. You've got a lot more wrong with you than just that. Before you go, Captain, don't grieve for the sinner, Captain. He knew he was wrong. Did there be a reckoning? He feared the word, kept coming here, begging me to go away, to release him. Who else knew you were here? No one. Captain, the bearer of the word needs no help. You think so? We get him like you by the dozen tape. Mean, frustrated people who can't make it on their own. They turn sour. They hide behind mystic words, long beards. They use fear and ignorance to get their own way. The kid makes the best audience, doesn't he? You get him young enough, you can keep him frightened all his life. He had no right to leave me. How could I work a farm like this? It was his duty to stay. A three for a dollar soothsayer with a grudge. Oh, I had no gratitude. Who took him out of the home, fed him, put clothes on his back? He gave the word, sinner. The fiery end is upon us all. Doom and blackness, the avenging sword. Uh, maybe the big one. 
I want a few minutes with an almanac. He said the pool house was dark when Billy Joe got it. Mm. The killer couldn't have hit the target without help from the moon. I want to know just how bright it was. I'll save you the trip. It was nice and full, man, with the grinning on his mind. Looks up things like that. Headquarters, Henry. I want to pick up a warrant. Take your choice. You will be kind to me when you get the DA's job. Malibu Beach, Henry. It's late, Captain. Yes, it is late. The planets let you down, De Groot. They should have warned you. Never give 25-year-old scotch to a man who drinks $2 corn whiskey. I don't know what you're talking about. Try Billy Joe Tate, a terrified kid. You had his ear. $50,000 worth, remember? There's only one way a con man can pull that kind of money. He's got to have a pipeline to the past, a real one, to get at those little hidden memories so they can dazzle his client, keep him believing. You had your pipeline. Jethro Tate, you pumped him. Sick old man hanging around like a vulture. Now let's see if it floats. Uh, it's private, you have no right. Straight from the planets to Groot. Measles, age five. Family home. Sister, three years older. Bonnie Bell. No wonder he thought you were king of the moon. This will read great in court. A murder jury just love it. For that's the only thing you can prove and nothing else. No, no. I'll show them the way to murder. Because the boy went to visit the old man. He saw the two of you together. He was frightened. It wasn't stupid. It'd be easy to add up. I'll throw it right back in your face and you'd be finished. And all this to Groot. All this. Right down the drain. You'd be back to reading palms again for a quarter. So to keep him quiet, you put a bullet in him. Then be so cold. What was the matter to Groot? Did Billy Joe tell her about you? Is that why you killed her? No gun. What you gonna do, walk on the water? The group, there's no place to go! Are they yeah. grunting? How about that? Book and first to be murder. As I was saying, break up anything. We're almost finished. Learning how to tell fortunes these days. Madam Felicia. Mm -hmm. Stars, cards, tea leaves. Tell your fortune, mister. Not if I can help it. Guarantee a good one. Very nice, but you don't seem to get the idea. Oh. Never waste time talking about the future. Burke's law. Any suggestions? We could try living it. Hmm. 